In this lab, we will use some simple physical tests to identify three major groups of organic molecules found in certain foods, carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins. The first category is carbohydrates. We use these typically for energy. They can be divided into three major groups, monosaccharides or simple sugars, disaccharides or double sugars, and complex carbohydrates. We will test for complex carbohydrates first. Here are the things we will test. Water, salt, table sugar, honey or glucose, gelatin powder, egg white, and I'll show you some old footage of some of the other things like the saltine cracker and the banana. For the first test, we're going to use iodine. Iodine turns starchy foods a blue-black color. First, we're going to fill the wells in our tray with a little bit of each of the substances we're testing. Notice that we put water in number one because it's our control. We don't expect anything to happen to it. Starch in number two. We're going to put table sugar in number three. Glucose or honey in number four. Gelatin powder in number five. And then finally, we'll put the egg white into number six. Now we're just going to add iodine to each of the wells. Iodine turns starch a blue-black color. So we're looking for black. That will be a positive result for starch. Now let's analyze the results. We're looking for a blue-black color. Starting with cornstarch. Oh, actually, should say starting with water. Did our water turn black? That's the first one. The second one is our cornstarch. Sucrose. I mean glucose, saltine cracker, egg white, that's what might be kind of tough, so I'll swirl around a little bit, egg white, we're looking for black, egg white, sorry, gelatin powder first, then egg white here, so gelatin powder, and then egg white, all right? The Benedict's test is a general test for simple sugars, but not every sugar can be detected by this test, just simple reducing sugars. Things like honey, which is just glucose, can easily be detected. Things like table sugar, however, cannot. To start the Benedict's test, we'll first fill our test tubes with some of our simple solutions. We're going to put water in test tube 1, cornstarch in test tube 2, table sugar, sucrose in test tube 3, honey, glucose in test tube 4, gelatin powder in test tube 5, and egg white into test tube 6. Simple sugars like glucose, fructose, and galactose uh, join together to make double sugars, and then in turn can join together to make polysaccharides or the complex carbohydrates. Let's take a close look now at the colors of our test tubes and make some preliminary observations on our data tables about what these simple sugars look like. After adding the Benedict solution and heating the test tubes for two minutes, we see the results. We're looking for a red, orange, or yellow color. That's a positive test for simple reducing sugars. Not all sugars are going to test positive, but simple reducing ones will. Here's the other results. Going from left to right, it's water, cornstarch, table sugar, glucose, cracker, gelatin powder, potato, banana, egg white. Starch is just a common way to store products like glucose. Plants store glucose and we get that energy from eating things like pasta, bread, even potatoes. Uh, you're looking at a slide of starch granules in potato cells. 
You can draw a picture similar to this in figure 2.1 on your lab or a picture similar to this in figure 2.2 in your lab. When we think of lipids, lipids are just fats and oils. The key to remember is that oil and water doesn't mix. When we typically think of fat, this is what we think of, saturated and unhealthy fats. Like eating this bacon double cheeseburger would be really bad for you. But not all fats are bad for you. Some fats, which are called unsaturated fats, are actually good for you and important to eat and, and to make a part of your daily uh, diet and intake of nutrients. For our fat test, we're just going to take some oil and water and put it on a brown paper towel. We're going to leave it here and wait for 10 minutes to see what happens as these evaporate. For the emulsification of lipids test, we will fill two test tubes with water and we're going to add some vegetable oil to each of the test tubes. Notice right away that lipids are nonpolar. Water is polar, but lipids are nonpolar. And so we say things like oil and water don't mix. In order to get oil and water to mix, we need something called an emulsifier, something that will allow the oil to mix a little with the water. So make some preliminary observations about our two test tubes. Now we're going to add some soap or detergent to test tube number two. Soap or detergent is an emulsifier. So when you wash your pots and pans, you use soap that cuts grease. And the idea is it allows some mixing between the oil and the water. Make some more observations. Again, just notice they're nicely layered. And we're going to shake up test tube one. And we're going to wait for a while and see what happens after we've shaken it up. Notice that it gets a little frothy, but it's still layered and the layers are fairly distinct between the oil and the water. Now we're going to shake up test tube number two, the oil, the soap, and the water. Shake them up. And hopefully we'll get to see some emulsifying of that lipid. Now after 10 minutes, we see that the test tube one has the lipids in a big glob on the top of the water. Whereas test tube two has the lipids still on the top, but they're not in a big glob. They're in lots and lots of little bubbles. And that's the effect of the detergent, the emulsifier. Now let's take a look at the brown paper bag. Notice right away that the water has evaporated and the oil has left a greasy kind of translucent stain into our paper bag. The oil leaves a spot, the water evaporates, the oily spot is translucent, that means you can see through it. That's a characteristic of lipids. Proteins are made up of 20 amino acids. Of those amino acids, some are essential, others are non-essential. Here's some typical proteins. Proteins are so important to eat because they perform so many different vital functions for our body. The essential amino acids have to be eaten, whereas non-essential amino acids are amino acids that your body can make. If you can take a protein, the shape of it, or structure of it and change its nature or denature it then the function of the protein might also be lost. The protein that we're going to use in our experiment is egg white, albumin. We're going to see again how we can denature egg white. We're going to try and denature this protein, albumin, in one of a couple ways. One way that we'll try is by heating it. Another way that we'll try is using an acid. We can use hydrochloric acid but I just have some lemon juice on hand and it's acidic enough. So here we are just cooking some egg white. We're going to notice some of the particular changes. This is what we typically think of when we think of cooking egg white 
But that's what happens. It goes from clear to white. Changing the appearance of meat and the flavor is one way that we can denature or change the nature of the proteins in the meat. Another way to denature proteins is by adding acid. So what we're going to use is just some lemon juice. You can use hydrochloric acid, but we're just using lemon juice because it was available. That's going to break apart the proteins. Now an easy way to test for proteins is using burette solution. Burette just turns proteins purple. Notice here in the display now that I have positive tests for proteins present in the first two and a negative test in the third one. The third one is where I added the acid. It completely denatured the proteins 